So just to stress, this is how to remove the part that you see in the video description. Uh, this car is being completely disassembled, so I'm showing you guys how to take things apart. Typically, reinstalling the part is just the same process backwards. If there's any sort of differences, I will be sure to let you know in this video. <laughs> and remove the upper intercooler piping. On this particular vehicle, the pipe on the left is different from factory, but the removal process is the same. Using a flathead screwdriver or the appropriate size socket, loosen up all clamps associated with the particular pipe you are removing. Please note that for this example, we have the upper radiator support removed, so we can show you particular things on the vehicle. If you have the upper radiator support still on, just move the hoses out of the way best you can, unless you feel like removing the intercooler. We have a video up that explains how to do that as well. To remove the intercooler pipe going to the throttle body, first we need to disconnect all the vacuum lines going to the diverter valve. Using pliers, remove the hose as shown. Try not to lose the clamp as I did. Unplug the wire associated with the MAP sensor. Using a 10 millimeter ratchet, remove the mounting bolt for the throttle body side intercooler pipe. Using a flathead screwdriver or the appropriate size socket, loosen the clamp on the throttle body. We have the upper radiator support removed so you can see this better. If you do this on your vehicle with the upper radiator support, that would be in the way. Use a flathead screwdriver to pop the retainer out that holds the map sensor wire in place. Remove the source line from the top of your diverter valve. Using a twisting motion, twist the upper pipe back and forward until it comes off of the throttle body. Unplug the throttle body. We must now remove the throttle body. There are four 8mm bolts holding them on. There's also a coolant line that runs through the throttle body. On this particular vehicle, somebody had already rerouted it. So if the coolant lines are still attached to the throttle body, we recommend removing those lines from the throttle body. Be careful, coolant will spill out of these lines. hoses and lines onto the top of the intake manifold. There's also two 8mm bolts holding on the EVAP system solenoids. Be sure to remove those as well. and tuck them off to the side so that they are out of the way. Remove the remaining two 
10 millimeter bolts along with one more eight millimeter bolt holding on the brake booster vacuum hose. This allows you to move the hoses out of the way as to remove the intake manifold. Remove the dipstick. Disconnect and relocate the PCV hose from the intake manifold. Remove the five 10 millimeter bolts from the intake manifold that hold it to the engine. There is one more 10 millimeter bolt on the side of the intake manifold that you'll see momentarily. That also needs to be removed. Disconnect the evap line from the intake manifold. If it is hard for you to remove this hose, remove it from the solenoid itself. We recommend removing it from this port so that it gives you more access to get to the bolt down below. The final bolt holding the intake manifold on is very hard to see. It is right in front of where we just pointed in the video. Get a small ratchet down there, loosen and remove this bolt. Under the intake manifold, there is one more wiring harness you need to separate. Use a pair of cutting dikes to remove this wire loom. Wiggle the intake manifold around until it comes free and remove it from the vehicle. Hi, you made it through a whole video. I appreciate that. You should go check out our other videos. Should also go check out our website, thefastreligion.com. We got like sweatshirts and t-shirts and stuff.